Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about how to choose a pair of winter gloves. It's just a fact of life that you can't stop winter, but what you can do is gear up for it. So with most bike kit, you'll get away with wearing the same stuff you wear the rest of the year. Just maybe chuck a few warm layers underneath. But unless you've got some kind of superpower for not feeling the cold in your fingers, then you're going to need to do something different with your gloves to keep your hands warm. Here's my advice to help you find the right gloves for you this winter. The external layer of a winter glove is pretty similar really to the gloves you'll use through the rest of the year. But let's run through what you might find on a winter glove and what those things can do for you. So they'll be made from either leather or textile or a combination of the two. Leather gives better protection against abrasion than an equivalent textile, but it's also more expensive. So it tends to cost more for a pair of leather gloves over a pair of textile. Some gloves combine the two materials. Usually you'll find textile on the back of the hand and then leather across the palm, or at least you'll get leather reinforcements on top of a textile palm. You might also find a reinforcing layer, especially around the outside of the palm. So this area here is quite vulnerable if it hits the deck and this extra layer like you've got here helps to protect the seam underneath there. It should protect it from opening up. You may also see some extra protection at the heel of the palm. At its simplest, this will just be an extra layer of leather or textile, which increases the time it takes for that material to wear through if, if everything goes wrong. Some gloves put a layer of foam in there as well. And then on higher end gloves, you get some hard protection here, which is designed to protect your scaphoid bone. Protection impact wise on the back of the hand is usually focused around your knuckles. Winter gloves at the lower end of the price range tend to have foam there to do that job. And as you move up through the price scale, you generally get armor with a hard shell. So maybe carbon fiber or you get some metal or some plastic that really should have a foam backing between your skin and the hard armor to make it more comfortable and also help absorb the impact forces. To check whether it's got proper armor, look at the CE label inside the glove. Decent gloves always have a CE label and anything imported to Europe or Britain since April 2018 needs that CE marking by law. If a glove meets level one, which has to be said, the vast majority of gloves at the moment meet level one, then you want a KP mark next to it. That stands for knuckle protection and it shows the gloves have passed that test. If it's one of the rare level two gloves, you don't need a KP mark as proper impact protection at the knuckles is a prerequisite of passing level two. The wrist restraint on a glove is something else to think about as well. On a lot of winter gloves, especially at the lower end of the price range, the restraint is on the back of the hand like it is here. When it's there, it's not as effective as one on the underside of the hand like you've got on these gloves. The bony bit at the heel of your palm is a really good barrier and it stops a glove sliding off so easily if the restraint hits that. That's why it's helpful to have it on the underside of the palm. If you have a look at the top of the glove too, you'll want something there to get it sealed tightly. If you're riding in the rain, then ideally you'll have the cuff of the glove inside the sleeve of your jacket. That way any rain that runs down your sleeve goes onto the glove and away rather than going in through the hole at the top of the glove. Because the risk then is that rain gets inside and it defeats the whole object of wearing a waterproof glove in the first place. So you might not have enough room for a glove inside the jacket you own. And there are also some people who just don't want to wear their gloves on the inside. So that leaves you with a couple of options, really. The most basic one is to have a glove like this. It's got a pull cord elastic tensioner at the top that lets you pull the closure tightly over your jacket to seal out as much rain as possible. Some gloves then have a twin cuff. So there's a thin inner cuff like this that goes inside your jacket. And then the main cuff here goes over the top of the jacket. So when water does get inside the main cuff, runs down the sleeve and in there, this inner cuff stops it getting inside your gloves. So these are fiddlier to put on, but it's a very effective way of keeping out rain. Another thing to look for if you're riding in the rain is a visor wipe. Having something on the left hand to clear rain from your visor is very useful. And some of us might even say it's actually essential if you're riding in the rain a lot. The basic ones will have some kind of absorbent material, maybe here, but the better ones have a rubber blade here that sweeps water off the visor. So you get it on the thumb or the forefinger. And one last detail to think about as well, touch screens. If you want to control your phone without taking one of your gloves off, then you'll want the tips of the forefinger at least to be touchscreen compatible. Now that is something you probably want to think about all year round, but if you think it's annoying taking a glove off in summer, then try it when it's cold and wet outside. Now, if we're talking about the inside of a pair of gloves, I thought it'd be easier to show you rather than just tell you. And we've taken a pair of winter gloves apart so we can show you what's on the inside. These started life as a pair with a minor stitching fault that couldn't be repaired. So don't worry, no functioning gloves were harmed in the making of this video. These two linings inside show you the two jobs that a winter glove has to do. First of all, they've got to keep your hands dry. And this job's done by this waterproof membrane, which is made from extruded PTFE. 
If you've ever used PTFE tape to seal up some threads in plumbing, then you'll know exactly what this material feels like. This one's just a bit thicker than that tape. Now, a scientist called Gore discovered years ago that this type of material was able to stop water droplets getting in from the outside without stopping sweat vapour escaping in the opposite direction. And that eureka moment led to Gore-Tex, which is the original waterproof and breathable membrane. Now, lots of other companies are able to make their own similar membranes, and this one's a generic one in these gloves rather than Gore-Tex itself. Gore is still the best known of those membranes, and you generally need to pay a little bit more money to get a Gore-Tex glove rather than a generic membrane like this one. There are a couple of reasons why you'd want to do that. The Gore guarantee is one of those. If your Gore-Tex gloves are faulty and they leak, then you can make a claim under the guarantee. The other reason you might go for it is that they're actually more breathable, in my experience anyway, than other membranes. Remember, it's not just rainwater we've got to worry about when we're riding. We've also got to make sure that any sweat on the inside of the gloves can get away rather than sitting on our skin and cooling down that temperature. It just shows you how staying dry and staying warm are firmly connected because wet skin loses heat 25 times faster than dry skin, which shows you that staying dry is the first step in keeping warm. On this glove, you can see some strips of tape here as well. These attach the waterproof part of the glove to the outer section, which stops it coming out with your hand when you take the gloves off. In this glove, it's a method called McFit, and Gore-Tex have their own equivalent, which is called Gore Grip. As well as stopping the glove from separating when you take it off, they keep those different layers more securely connected. So when you're riding, you get better feel for the bars rather than having all separate elements sliding around inside. There's also tape fixing this waterproof glove to the warmth layer inside, which I've got here. On the back of the hand with this glove, there's a thin fleece layer just here, which is next to the skin. And you've got some insulating wadding and then a mesh material on the outside where it secures inside the waterproof lining. Having a thick warmth liner on the back of the hand makes sense as that's the bit that's most exposed to the cold while you're riding along. And extra thickness here doesn't really affect your feel too much for the controls. Now these are quite light gloves, so there's no real insulation layer across the palm. It's just a single layer of fabric for comfort and a little bit of warmth. For me, a glove like this is suited to cool conditions, say low double digit temperatures like a 10 or 11 degrees Celsius and up, although it does always depend on how much you personally feel the cold. Thicker winter gloves will have insulation across the palm as well for extra warmth. And I personally go for a pair of these type of gloves once the temperatures drop below nine or 10 degrees. Once the temperature gets down to around five degrees, then I think it's really time to start thinking about some extra assistance. You could go for heated gloves, which is another video all to itself, or you could look at making some bike modifications. When it comes to that, heater grips are a good start, and a pair of hand guards or maybe even some bar muffs will deflect some cold air and help you retain your body heat. It's just a necessary evil of biking that winter gloves are thicker than normal ones and they will never feel as free as a pair of summer gloves. For some people that means they just can't accept that compromise and it's especially a problem for riders with smaller hands because the last thing they need is thicker gloves. It's hard enough anyway to wrap their hands around the bars when they're quite small, so thicker gloves make that a lot worse. For people like that, those mods that I mentioned before, like heater grips and bar guards, are really the way to go. So hopefully that'll let them get away with thinner gloves. Now this bit's not really about gloves at all, but you can help your hands stay warm by keeping your torso warm. If your body's core temperature starts to drop, then it will instinctively concentrate circulation to focus on that area at the expense of extremities like your fingers if it needs to. So wearing warm layers under your jacket or even a heated vest if you can stretch to it can really help you keep your hands warm as well. How much you want or need to spend on a pair of winter gloves depends really on how much use you're going to get from them. It's harder to justify a big outlay if you're just doing the odd cold weather ride, harder than if you're planning on riding all through the winter no matter what the weather. As a general rule of thumb, a pair of 50 quid gloves is likely to be mostly made from textile, have soft knuckle padding and a generic waterproof membrane. If you get up towards 100 quid, you're going to start to find more leather, you'll find some Gore-Tex gloves and you'll also start getting some hard armour. Spend over 100 quid and you're more likely to be able to choose a pair of Gore-Tex gloves, get hard armour and leather and also get some of those other handy features that we've covered too. So separately from this video, we've also prepared three guides to winter gloves for riders on different budgets. We've got the best five gloves for 50 quid or less, the top five that are available for 100 pounds or less, and then the best overall gloves regardless of the price. You'll find links to those popping up at the end of this video, and they're also linked in the description below. I hope you found this helpful for choosing the right pair of winter gloves to keep you warm this winter. But if there's anything you'd like to ask, or if there's any helpful advice you think I've missed, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.